Here we go then people, it's me Reedy with another episode of Beat the First Man. Coming up on today's show, Road to Wembley meets Zooming In as we are joined by a Walsall fan ahead of their FA Cup tie this weekend. We've got How Old, which is frankly impossible, I'm not going to lie, and all of your usual nonsense you've come to love from the show. So what are we waiting for? Roll the titles. Yes, episode 66 then of our high budget, high technology show um, with all the usual nonsense. If you are new to the show, welcome on board the BTFM bus. Do not forget to click subscribe down below. Um, don't forget to ring the little notifications bell so you never miss another episode. The last thing I want is for me to produce such high quality entertainment and to you miss out on it. So, and get involved guys, leave your comments down below, drop us a like, all of that usual nonsense that you hear from every YouTube you ever watch. And I'm saying the same stuff, so hey ho. Um, so let's get on with it. How old? And I'm not gonna lie, this week's is quite frankly brutal bordering on impossible. So we're going to head to sunnier climes and it's Portugal this week and a man who had a you know he had an okay career he made 117 appearances with a variety of clubs scoring 17 goals from his position in midfield but to be honest sometimes there's no words can do justice to the photo I'm about to show you. This photo was taken when he was playing for Braga so what we want to know is when this photo of Antonio Borges was taken How old was he? What a fantastic head of hair, it has to be said. I'm sure Ted will have something to say about that later on in the show. So Stoke Gabriel boys, as you know, they're uh, struggling down the bottom of the league this season. Not as bad as last year when they, they really struggled. Um, we were hoping for a return to form with a home match and the roar of the balcony. But unfortunately against Dartmouth, it was a 4-0 defeat. They missed a host of chances, I'm led to believe, while it was still just 1-0. But it wasn't to be. So we're still bottom. Still just behind Sidmouth, but only on goal difference. There's seven goals in it between the two teams. But, uh, you know, it's still there to catch them and not finish bottom. Sadly, though, this week there's no game. So that's rather typical, isn't it? So there'll be no Stoke Gabriel update next week. So there's no game this weekend. So that is your Stoke Gabriel update. Um, don't forget, this is massive. So Mind Aid 2021. This Saturday, there'll be a special show of Beat the First Man. It's a Mind Aid 2021 special. I was joined by five guests who have an involvement in the production of their, their song. I'm not going to talk about it too much right now because we've got a whole show dedicated out to it. It'll be online on Saturday morning at eight o'clock. So when you finish watching this on Thursday night, you've got less than two days for another show. How good am I? And literally, I'll be glad for next week. I'll have some evenings back. Um, so road to Wembley. Uh, this week is back to the FA Cup and our team, Warsaw. You may remember they knocked Kingsley out in the last round. Well... Earlier on in the week, I caught up with a Walsall fan. He's the man who runs the Vital, Wall Web, Vital Walsall website. That's not easy to say, I can tell you. Um, Roberto Petruco, as we discussed this week's FA Cup tie against Swindon. So here is Zooming In meets Road to Wembley. So here we are then, Zooming In meets Road to Wembley. And I'm delighted to say we are joined tonight by Rob Petruco, the man who runs the Vital Walsall website and Twitter account. Rob, how are we, my friend? Yeah, not bad. I mean, I could do with the weather being a bit warmer. It's so cold at the moment. Like, it's, I was it's, playing at it's it's the league, league and oh, Baltic. It yeah. needs to warm up before the games at the weekend, that is for sure. Yeah, because yeah, you kind of think FA Cup coming up, the amount of frozen pitches, like you just want to get full schedule in. Yeah, no, nothing, nothing. Worse. I mean, I did have to laugh at uh, not specifically the Tottenham fans who'd made the journey all the way up there, but the fact that the uh, the Premier League and all its glory had a game called off yesterday because of snow just made me laugh quite a lot. Yeah, and the the guy that travelled from I can't remember where in America, it might have been Boston. He's a Spurs oh, yeah. fan, and he ended up in Burnley, and he put a, a photo outside Turf Moor. And... It was it Brilliant. was mildly amusing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but of course, Rick, Rob, the reason you are on is Walsall are now our road to Wembley FA Cup team. You you did the dirty on our old team, Kings Lynn Town, in the last round, beating them one nil. So we do apologise. <laughs> did you make the long trek to Kings Lynn? Unfortunately, I, I wasn't. I was working um, that weekend. Um, I was in the opposite direction. I was all the way down in Exeter for work. Um, yeah. 
but I had it on uh, in the car listening on the way down. And as ever, Walsall managed to frustrate no matter how, whether you watch them, listen, follow online. So, you know, in true Sadler style. But this is the time. You can be the ones that beat the uh, beat the first man FA Cup curse. Because every time we get a team, they go out in the next round. So you guys need to be the ones that break the curse. Can you pick someone else? Can you interview your <laughs> Swindon fan instead? <laughs> wow, we'll come on to that. So when the draw for the second round, I've said straight from the... So we started this way back in the extra preliminary round. And yeah. there are guys on from, from teams along the way. And I said, inevitably what would happen was it will come up against somebody who I really don't want to win. Now, I lived in Oxford for many, many years. I have a lot of friends who are massive Oxford fans. If okay. you lose to Swindon and I have to follow Swindon as my next team, <laughs> I could lose a lot of subscribers. So, <laughs> do, you, do you know what? Come 5pm on Saturday when we've been knocked out, I'll take solace in the fact that you're now having to uh, <laughs> support Swindon. <laughs> so what was your, uh, as a Walsall fan, what was your uh, initial reaction to the draw? Um, I th- it's, it's one of those that all Walsall fans had a solitary uh, yeah. to it. Um, I think Kingsland was quite an exciting first round draw. It's a club that we'd never played, we'd never been to, but we took quite quite a good following. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of, of lower, kind of, I say lower league teams, but non-league teams in it. And you kind of, the hope is to get to the third round. And it, it would be typical Walsall to get knocked out by a fellow League Two club, who then go on to have a really good time. <laughs> so I think we'll be organised, we'll be ready. Matt Taylor loves the FA Cup, so he will be wanting to get to the third round. And But yeah, it's just, it's just typical that, you know, you've got clubs in it from like the top end of League One that you think, well, oh, that would be a decent trip out or, yeah. you know, a good non-league away day. And we get a team that we're playing, I think, two weeks later in the league. So, yeah. I know when, because um, as, as a Leeds fan, when we were in the championship, we always seemed to draw Birmingham or QPR in the third round of the FA Cup. You know, why have we got Birmingham and QPR yeah. again? We're playing them in like two. And you either want one of the top sides or someone lower down you can beat and move on to the next round. And we yeah, nearly, honestly, it was probably nearly, a bit of meh, wasn't it? Like you said. Yeah, we, well, we nearly <laughs> drew Swindon in the Papa John's as well. We had the choice of four teams to play. We're playing them as we're recording this on the Monday. Yeah. We're recording them tomorrow night on the uh, playing them tomorrow night on the Tuesday. We've got Cambridge, but we nearly had Swindon Tuesday, Swindon Saturday, and then in a couple of weeks' time again, <laughs> you'd have been you'd have been sick of the sight of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so doing my uh, ultimate research as always, I think it's fair to say you have been consistently inconsistent this season. Uh, yep. So before Saturday, six wins, six draws, six defeats. You'd, I think you'd scored and conceded the same amount of goals. Yep. I think Saturday was nil-nil until like the, the 90th minute or whatever it was. Nice long trip to Carlisle to lose in the 90th yep. minute or whatever. Do you think you guys are in a position where you're very close to kicking on to the higher reaches? Or do you think mid-table is probably where you are for this season? Or it's It's been... It's been one of those weeks where we've gone, we could really push the playoffs here, followed by, no, nah, we're mid-table. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I think you'll understand as being Leeds fan, especially in the championship for the yeah. few seasons where it was like, could we, could we? We, there are there's signs of progress under Matt Taylor, the definite signs of progress. We had a big win midweek against Port Vale, which was big for many reasons. Um, one, because they are our most local rival in League Two and because our former manager, Daryl Clark, left us to join Port Vale. So it was yeah. quite a... Um, Sweet. It was one that a lot, <laughs> a, a lot of fans were looking forward to. Yeah. And we beat them 1-0. We were very professional. We looked very well organised. And then it's, it's sort of the hangover from that is that we go to Carlisle, conditions aren't great, we can't really get going and then concede an 89th or 88th minute goal that you know sees Carlisle who before that were the worst form team in the top four divisions win for the first time in like something like 10 11 league games so we kind of we, we go from playing really well to just games that we should win we never do 
which is what gives me a little bit of hope for the weekend. Yeah. Swindon are a more organised team. They are a better quality of team than Carlisle. That's no disrespect to Carlisle, but the league doesn't lie at the moment. Um, but no, I think I think if we can finish 10th, we've had a good season, but I would like mid-table is, is pretty much what a lot of the fans are expecting, yeah. given the huge turnover we've had. But it's nice to see that there are, there are signs of promise there that, you know, if we do string together a couple of victories this month, and um, sorry, going into December, that, you know, we could... We could be an outsider for the playoffs, but I don't think we're ready to go up. Yeah. So there's other things you learn about this when you're doing your research on teams and actually find players that you, you go, bloody hell, <laughs> when did he end up there? And I've done right, it all I'm, the way through. I'm going to make a prediction. Go on. Our left back, Stephen Ward, by any chance. Yeah, spot on. <laughs> I was like, how, how did he end up there? The last I knew he was still at Burnley. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't. I, I can't remember now the story or the connection, but with Matt Taylor, who is, he turned 40 at the weekend. He's only recently retired. He's got, he had a very good reputation in throughout English football and um, obviously famous for hitting 35 yard screamers for Portsmouth yeah. um, and Jamie Fullerton, who despite his playing career, not being that of Matt Taylor's, Behind the scenes, he's got a growing reputation from years at Palace. So I think, I think so, I cannot remember now, but across the way, Ward knew one of them or was impressed by them and, yeah, and joined us. And he's 37 and has been pretty much ever present in the league. Yeah, it was, I must admit, I was very surprised. It wasn't a name I expected to jump out. So I was like, bloody hell, I'm sure he's still at Burnley. <laughs> yeah, there's always one player. There's, there's a friend of mine who's a Fulham fan. And you'll just get a random text from him when we sign, like, an, an elder statesman going, how have you got them? Like, when we got Matt Jarvis on loan, he was like, God, I used to buy him all the time on Championship Manager. <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing when looking at your squad, it, you clearly got a very, very young squad. There's a lot of youngsters in yeah. there. Is that, do you think that's playing a part in the consistency we spoke about earlier? Yeah, I think we've got a lot of younger players, but... They're, they're quite impressive. But I think the starting eleven isn't overly that young, um, especially in, in defence. And in go our goalkeeper, Carl Rushworth, is only 20, but yeah. he, he plays years, years above his age. He, like, mentally, he's a very good goalkeeper. I mean, defensively, I think our youngest defender, that normal starting defender, is mid-20s. It's then further up the pitch that, you know, you, you wide kind of flare players more so. But then again, Brendan Kiernan's 27. But I think it's when you look on the bench that suddenly we've got younger players, less league experience, but there is talent there. Yeah. So, so the FA Cup, obviously, second round, the big clubs come in next round. So yeah. as a fan of a League Two side, how big is the second round of the FA Cup. It, it is big. It's, I mean, we'll play it down if if we lose and Swindon get an average tie. But Of course. <laughs> of course. But it's, I think now more than ever, it is such an important trophy and tournament. You look at the prize money, you look at the money for even kind of being on BBC's extended highlights. You can you can make a lot of money from just by getting to the third round. Yeah. And for the, for kind of like the big clubs listening in, you know, that a couple of hundred thousand going from where Walter will enter to the, the third round, sort of it's two games, but to make a couple of hundred thousand before ticket sales, you know, that's, that's big money. That's a couple of players salaries for the season. Yeah. It, it is, and then, you know, if you draw a big team away, suddenly you, you, you can completely change your January transfer market. Yeah, of course. So let's let's fast forward to... Uh, to when we're in the hat. When you're in the hat. <laughs> so, uh, so go on then. We're in the hat. Who would you want if you got into that hat? Well, I think... So I was actually at Spurs um, doing some reporting uh, at their stadium on Wednesday. And... I tell you what, it's a beauty. 
<laughs> it's a beauty. I'd love to go and see a game there. Yeah. Um, and just because the, the two people that I was talking with um, when I said I was a Walsall fan, one said, who are they? And the other went, that's a shame. So I'd love to draw them and knock them out. And Brilliant. Then just send an email. <laughs> but, you know, we're thinking really far advance. I'd like a, a you know, a good Premier League away day. Um, yeah. It's something that, that we haven't had really from kind of in recent years, the biggest club we've drawn was in the League Club, well, in the League Cup where we had Chelsea at home. And I mean, that was amazing, but, you know, you'd love to go to the Bridge or to one of the Manchester clubs or Liverpool. But yeah, I think if I was if I was choosing, I'd probably go with Spurs away. I mean, we'll, we'll let it slide that you missed out the biggest Premier League club and the, the chance to come to Ellen Road and it's rickety old stadium. I mean, Oh, the, sorry, you mean the relegation <laughs> candidates? <laughs> Only till tomorrow. It's all over tomorrow. <laughs> Panic's over tomorrow. Don't worry. OK. <laughs> um, now, obviously, there is a bit of a link with Swindon with your manager and assistant manager. So Matty Taylor and Neil McDonald have both been involved yeah. at Swindon. Do you think that will add a little bit of extra spice or um, or is there, is there no, real, uh, no real niggle there? Uh, I don't... I don't think so. There's been a lot of change at Swindon, like a lot of change. And I think, I, I think it would be nice for them. Like Swindon gave Taylor a chance with coaching and he is, he's, he's a professional. He's, a, he, he's comes across such a gentleman that you sort of feel that he'll go back there. He'll be very respectful. It, it, there won't be an edge to it. Yeah. It, in my opinion. So there's one last question, Rob. And this is the most important question of all. But yeah. actually, there's two last questions. Okay. Are you going to win? My if I was putting if I was putting a bet on, I would say that we're going to draw and then win the away leg or win the win the replay. That's what I'd go with. That's what my my head is saying. Well, Actually, no, my head's saying we'd lose the replay. My heart's saying we'll win it. <laughs> <But> <laughs> well, I can that. You could be the ones to break the curse. It's got to happen. This yeah, is the it, week. This yeah. is the week. It's got to be broken. Yeah, uh, it, one, it will. And I think, yeah, one. I think both teams are going to take it very seriously. We will. We'll be up for it. Taylor will make sure that the team is up for it. Yeah. Um, especially after the disappointment at the weekend. And yeah, we're going to get. We're going to draw leads away. <laughs> in the third round and, and we'll then I have, the to cheer for all, I have to cheer for Walsall in the third round yeah yeah <laughs> I can see it coming it's going to happen without yeah. a shadow can, of a doubt you can come get a ticket in the away end with us and, uh... <laughs> brilliant I look for send my lads off to the home end and I'll meet yeah, them yeah yeah of course yeah, yeah. <laughs> so one last question Rob very important question when you win will you come back on before the third round tie absolutely of course top, top man what a top man you are Rob, needless to say, and people, if you're driving up the M6 on Saturday between three and five, don't forget to pat your horn, get behind the saddlers as you drive past the stadium. For those who are uneducated, Rob, that is the stadium that you see when you drive up the M6 and people go, hey, whose ground's up? It's the, the amount of tweets that you see going, uh, you know you're on a, way, on a way day when you pass this stadium and you don't even need to open it. You're like, oh, yeah. not again. Yeah, not again. <laughs> well, we're all behind the Saddlers, mainly because I don't want to be a Swindon fan for the next round, Rob. So please, please, please do the business on Saturday. Never mind this replay nonsense. Get it all yeah. done and dusted Saturday. Nice tie for the third round against yeah. Man United so I can properly cheer you on. And, uh, <laughs> and then if the, if the offer of a ticket in the way end is available for that one, I'm there. <laughs> I'll sort your ticket if you get me a drink before the game. Right. D done. Deal. Done. <laughs> <laughs> right, Rob, thank you so, so much for your time, mate. Best of luck on Saturday. We're willing you on. I hope you, uh, I hope you do it and you get that third round tie that you guys really, really want. From uh, Thank you very much. Hooper. Thanks for having me on. Oh, pleasure, my friend. Pleasure. And we'll see you before the third. We'll see you before the third round. Fingers but for crossed, now, yeah. it's back to the show. There we go then, good lad was young Rob, and as you heard, he has agreed that when they win in the second round, he will come on the show before the third round. Can they beat the FA Cup curse? Come on, Walsall. And you heard it as well, if they get Man United away in the next round, I'm in the Walsall end, 
cheering on the boys from Walsall. Come on, you saddlers. Um, the FA Trophy took centre stage last week, but sadly, our boys Marine, it was, it was called off because of the weather. Uh, it was rearranged for Monday uh, away at Bradford Park Avenue. And then it got rearranged for Wednesday. I'm recording this on Wednesday. So as it stands, I've got no idea who's won. The winners are at home to Halifax in the next round. That much I do know. But as always, we've beat the first man. We are on the road to Wembley. Wembley. We are beat the first man. We're on the road to Wembley. Wembley. <sighs> Dad v lad fantasy football. Now, I appreciate what I'm about to tell you will bring you tears, sadness, and a little bit of glom to your life, so I'd like to apologise, but there will be no Dad v Lad fantasy football video this week. Stop booing at the back, it's not my fault, there's a reason, listen. So the reason we're not doing one this week is because we've got two rounds of fixtures, so the midweek games, it was just going to get really messy trying to tie it all up, so we just decided, me and Keen, that we'd leave this week, and next week we'd come back with two rounds of fixtures we'll have updated, so the whole thing could have completely changed. The one thing he doesn't know is that the Leeds Crystal Palace game, somebody made Rafinha captain. Boom. Anyway, last week, I actually beat him as well. 53-43. So I pulled back 10 points last week. The gap now is just 21 points between us. Um, in the league table, I can tell you Gary Hamilton's leading the way. He's extended his lead to 18 points now after getting pegged back the other week. And Trish Barrett is now fallen further behind. She is 105 points adrift at the bottom. So I think it's fair to say she's getting relegated. Anyway, now it's time for this. Yes, tales of the unexpected people. And just like how old, we head to Portugal again. Portugal again. Now, you may have seen this, you may not. If you haven't seen it, trust me, this is an absolute belter. So last weekend, the boys from Belenenses were due to play Benfica away in the league. This is the premier division of the Portugal League. Very important to remember that. Now, so they had a COVID outbreak and they were left with just nine players, two of which were goalkeepers. But the league, in their ultimate wisdom, told Belenenses they had to play the game. So they rocked up at Benfica with their nine players and in the first half, Benfica, unsurprisingly, ran riot and were leading by seven goals to nil at half time. Now, here's the gem. So the Belenenses, somebody within the changing rooms clearly came up with a master plan because for the second half, they only came out with seven men. So they claimed that two men had got injured in the first half and couldn't come out for the second half. So they're down to seven. Now, you can still carry on with seven men, of course. So they didn't get the game abandoned at half time. Cute move. Come back out as if you're going to carry on playing. Within one minute of the second half starting, the second goalkeeper, who you may remember is playing out on pitch, um, wow, how Montero, uh, he went down with an injury and unfortunately he couldn't continue. What are the chances? So suddenly Belenenses are down to six men and the match is abandoned. Absolute genius. So whoever worked it out at Belenenses, beautiful. To actually go through with starting the second half and then somebody coming off injured, absolutely superb. Beautiful scenes amongst the madness, though. This is my favourite bit. Here is, coming up on the screen now, my favourite piece of this whole story. Yes, they posed for a team photo with nine players. Absolutely beautiful. Big up Belenenses. I love that. Absolutely superb. Anyway, it's time for uh, Ted to return. What the bloody hell, Ted? Why are you wearing a mask? The unicorn variant, Reedy, the unicorn variant. The what, Ted? The unicorn variant, the one in the news. Sounds pretty dodgy to me. I'm not getting involved in that. Two things, Ted. We don't really talk COVID in on here, unless it's about football, like the Belenenses boys a minute ago. And secondly, it's the o Omicron variant, not the unicorn variant. Reedy, you say Omicron, I say unicorn. It's all words. I just don't fancy catching a virus that turns me into a unicorn. OK, Ted, well, first off, there is no such thing as unicorns. Reedy, wash your mouth out, son. You'll be telling me next there's no tooth fairy. Well, now that I hate to break it to you, Ted, but Reedy, stop it. Just stop it. OK, Ted, well, let's move on to the crunch of why you're here. The nominations for your little knob of the week. Reedy, I think players and managers have got wise to this. I think you could be right, Ted, but surely in the world of football, we found somebody who can win the award last week. Oh, yes, we have, really. Don't you worry. Oh, Mr. Gruff Voice himself. What, Sean Dyche? What, what are you giving it to Sean Dyche? They didn't even play. Ted, they didn't even have a game. It was called off. I know, Reedy. Take a look at this picture on screen now. Ha! 
Ah, yes. So, uh, Sean Dyche in a sleeved shirt in the driving snow. I mean, is the man stupid? He must be freezing. Ted, I don't mean to be rude. I'm not telling him any of this. He's a big lad. He looks quite hard. I think he probably beat me up in a fight. So, I'm not telling him any of this. Well, I'll tell him, Reedy. Sean Dyche, you're an absolute idiot. And you're my little knob of the week for this week. Ted, that's an incredibly brave shout. But uh, yeah, so Ted's little knob of the week is Sean Dyche for wearing a shirt in the driving snow and not a coat. Crazy. Anyway, uh, you'll be back later on for how old the reveal. Oh, yes, Reedy. I've got plenty to say about that one. I'm sure you have, Ted. I'm sure you have. Anyway, now it's time for a bit of this. Look like it. Yes, look alike EE, -E, where I trawl the world of football and find you somebody famous in football and somebody famous somewhere else in the world and how they look alike. This week, it's a Premier League manager and he's a very, very famous Premier League manager. Been around the world, managed at some of the top clubs in the world. And he looks alarmingly like a character from a very famous movie. So this week's... Look alike EE. Yes, indeed. Rafa Benitez, the Everton manager, and Al from Toy Story. Never been seen in the same room at the same time. That is why you keep coming back for this shit. It has to be said. There's no two ways about it. That sort of entertainment. Absolutely brilliant. So let's take a little bit of a break from the uh, the football, shall we? And let's go and head on over as uh, Kian says, listen up. And what tune he's chosen for you this week. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another Kian says, listen up, where I'll give you a song that you need to listen to this week. And this week's song is not a new song. It's been out for, I think, quite a few months now. But they're a new band, so I'm counting it. And it's um, Try That by The Slates. So a young band from Leeds. They're all uh, like close to my age, I think. Yeah, they are. And um, I know one of them. So, yeah, just go and give it a listen. They're going to do big things. They've got two songs out, but that's the one I recommend. Obviously, go and listen to the other one as well because support the lads. And they're playing some gigs in Leeds. They're playing Supporting Overpass. So that will be out when this comes out. There'll probably still be tickets available. So go and get on that. And if you can make it, go and make it. Support the lads and support Overpass because they're a good band as well. Cheers. So there we go. It's a tune I've not listened to before. So I will too be listening up to this one. So if we haven't tried it out already, let's go and try it now. It is called Try That by The Slates. So let's go and see. Do you agree with Kean's choice? Leave your comments down below on what you think of The Slates song. The Lineal European Cups then start with the main event, the actual Lineal European Cup. The boys from Augsburg, well, they retained it by the skin of their teeth with a 97th minute equaliser at Hertha Berlin through Michael Gregorich. Um, so they kept the cup courtesy of that. This week they are at home to Bochum looking to defend it for the third time. Can the boys from Augsburg do it? In the Lineal UEFA Cup, Leverkusen defended it twice. Now it nearly came to Scotland. Celtic were 2-1 up in Leverkusen with 10 minutes to go, but two late goals saw Leverkusen win. They retained the trophy. At the weekend, a much more impressive performance by the Leverkusen boys. They won 3-1 at RB Leipzig, easily defending the trophy and carrying it on through to this weekend, where they are at home to Gruertha Firth, who are down at the bottom of the Bundesliga. So my money is on the boys from uh, Bayer Leverkusen defending it again this week. But check in next week. Let's see. Instagram's the place to get the big updates on that because that's the place where I put it first of all, however, whoever wins. So if you're not following us on Instagram, go and search out, beat the first man. You'll always get the updates on there on that. So the return of Ted can only mean one thing. It's time to reveal the age of how old. Reedy, really, this one was just stupid. A man with a comedy wig and a moustache. Ted, that was his real hair and his real moustache. Whatever, Reedy, really good one. Is if anybody went around with hair like that, Ted, you have to remember, it's from an era. That's what people wore their head, you know, they had the mullets. It was, I don't know why I'm doing that. I've never had a mullet in my life. I never will have a mullet. I'm certainly not going to have a mullet now, but I've never had a mullet. I'd just like to point that out. In case any of you are thinking, Christ, really had a mullet. But uh, no, so I never had a mullet. But that was that was how it was. Well, thank God I never had one, really. They look ridiculous. So um, how old do you think he was then, Ted? 12. 12, Ted, 12. Why would he be 12? Look at his hair. Look at his moustache. He's not going to be 12, is he? OK, 40. Oh, you're just being stupid, Ted. So let's find out anyway. Let's go and see how old he was. So when this picture of Antonio Borges was taken. I can reveal he was 31 years of age. This game gets stupider. 
I mean, we might as well just play, is it a real person or not? It's clearly a real person, Ted, and clearly you've not taken defeat very well. Again, just because you got it wrong. Really, I can't hang around here. I'm off to avoid the unicorns. See you next week. The unicorns, brilliant. Anyway, another show draws to a close and the madness is over for another week. But don't forget, you haven't got long to wait for the next one because we've got that special Mind Aid episode going online on Saturday morning at eight o'clock. The old time for the normal beat, the first man. So that you'll find another episode on Saturday. Uh, if you are new and you've enjoyed this, drop us one of those. Click subscribe down below or the usual malarkey. Love having you on board the BTFM bus. Please stay aboard. Because ding, ding, for now, it is next stop, Saturday, the 4th of December for the Mind Aid 2021 special. Please make sure you join us. It's really, really important for so many reasons. But for now, everybody, stay safe.